Okay, so like I said, I'm Tony Tesler. Um, today I'm going to show you a couple things with designer series paper because it is still on sale. Um, I just recently got the Artistry Blooms. I've had the plaid tidings. I love that. Poinsettia. You're going to see more with that. Um, Christmas ones, peonies. That's really pretty. Whale of a Time. I love this. I had a whole class with this. Uh, more Christmas stuff, heartwarming hugs, magic in the night. I'm going to use this today. Snowflake Splendor. I have not even cracked open that package. Hey, Leslie. In good taste. I really like this one. A lot of woodsy prints um, and tile, like good background things. Playing with patterns. I just got this and we're going to be using that on our second project. Playful Pets. I've seen a lot of cute stuff with those. So that is why we're doing designer series paper today. Now, I didn't get any mail. I usually start showing you like what I got in the mail this week. I didn't get anything this week. Boo! Um, but I did work on a couple cards this weekend with some friends. We did embossing, so I'll show you those. Um, so what we did, let me, I don't know how close I need to bring this. Um, I inked up the embossing folder. This is the evergreen embossing folder. And this is probably, the green part is pressed down. So I think this is probably the back side of it, um, but I really liked it. And I just smashed ink right on the embossing folder. And I like to do both sides and then run it through with paper because I don't know which side's gonna turn out better. I don't know which, you know, I'm gonna like better. So I do it both sides and then I pick and it's kind of hard to pick because they both look pretty. Uh, but this was with shaded spruce and I did it on shimmery white paper but that was kind of a waste because I can't tell. Like with all the ink and the, the embossing, I don't know. I don't know that it would change it, but the shimmery is not very apparent. So disappointing. Um, then my next one, I actually made three, but I already sent one away. So, oh, Bonnie, you had a question about the dog. That is a punch. It's not a stamp set. It's There's a dog punch and a cat punch. So that's what I use for that one. Um, for this, I used the tin tile folder and I used Daffodil Delight ink, but then I paired it with um, Bumblebee cardstock. And that is a really good match. Like it really coordinates nicely. And then the Bumblebee ribbon. And again, I like both sides of this and it's not all the same. Like there's some different bare spots and more ink other places. I like it. And then these I just colored in with the um, Stampin' Blends. So that was this weekend. That's all I have to show you for other cards. Now let's, let me move this. And we're gonna get to our first card. So I love slim lines. Um, I've said this before, I like all the real estate that you get with them. There's like a lot of room to decorate and we're gonna make an envelope. So with this designer series paper, move this over here. This is the Magic in the Night designer series paper. So it's the Halloween pack, but it's not all Halloween prints. That's what I wanted to, to show you. So I'm, I like this side, um, but this is, it's flowers and then there's, you know, just a few, there's some spider webs, but when you look at it, you don't think Halloween. So we're gonna use that and I'm gonna make the envelope slimline envelope. I've got a file on my sharing group with the the pattern and instructions from another girl that shared it. So I posted that there um, for how to make this envelope. But we need an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper for this. So let's start there. All right, now I want my pattern to go in a certain direction. So that's what I'm worried about. So when I cut it, I'm gonna cut the eight and a half this way. Just get this out of the way. Seems like all my ink pads end up, everything ends up all right in the middle. Okay, so I'm gonna cut this at eight and a half. By 11. All right, so I've got this little strip left. I may or may not do anything with that. So this will be for our envelope. Now before I, let me cut this. 
So my card is eight and a half by three and a half. That's the size of most slimline cards, but you can make yours different. Some people make them nine, four by nine, um, or eight and three quarters by three and three quarters. There's really um, not a lot of rules about that. Leslie, does the envelope require extra postage? So the envelope itself, this size envelope does not. It's a matter of weight. So if I make, when I find, when I make these envelopes out of cardstock, it makes the whole thing heavier. And then I have to put an extra 15 cents on it. Um, but just this, especially with designer series paper, this is light enough. Um, but with all this like doodads and stuff, I would weigh this and see, but that's what would make it extra not the size. Um, if you don't have a whole lot of layers on your card, like I've got a layer on the inside, you know, two layers on the outside, some dimensionals. This does add some weight, but I think it's gonna be fine. Um, but if you didn't have a scale, ugh. yeah, so. All right, um, so my designer series paper, I am gonna cut this eight and a quarter by three and a quarter. So this little strip that's left, should be three and a half left, yep. All right, so three and a quarter by eight and a quarter. All right. Get the... So let's do the envelope first. How about that? Because this is just a uh, scoring and a few little snips and corner rounding. All right, so we've got our eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. We are gonna score it at two and a half inches and six and a half inches. And I've made so many of these that I just remember the di uh, dimensions. All right, and then we'll score this side at a half an inch and nine and a half. And you do have some wiggle room. Like if this is gonna hold an eight and a half inch card, it would hold actually up to an eight and three quarters inch card. But if you wanted to make your card a four by nine, you would just scooch this, that nine and a half, maybe scooch it out to 10. So you can do some adjustments. All right, now scissors. This is hard to see on the black. Um, maybe this is a little easier to see. So this will be our bottom flap. I'm gonna cut in an angle and then a slight angle to cut that off. Slight angle and then there. For the top, I want it to be straight this way. So I'm gonna cut on the left side of the score mark. And again, I'm just gonna do a slight angle. And then I'm gonna cut on the right side of the score mark and a slight angle. All right, this I'm not gonna save. Corner rounder, hey Sue. So I'm just gonna um, round the corners of what will be the top flap. Okay. And then we're just gonna fold these in. So these side pieces, they overlap by about um, maybe an inch. So I'm gonna put just a little, you can use sticky strip or regular tape, whatever you want. I like, I'm gonna use this liquid glue and I'm just gonna hold it here for a second with one hand and have some coffee with the other. Mm -mm. Okay, now this bottom flap, this is gonna come up. And again, I'm gonna use glue. You don't want any adhesive that's gonna land on that spot. Since I did, that's because I angled those cuts. If I had gone straight across, there would be no gap. But So I'm just gonna put the glue right here at the tippy top. 
so that will not touch that part. And then I'm just gonna hold that down again. This glue really is pretty quick about drying well enough, you know. There. And I only got a little bit on my finger, so winning. All right, and then we will fold that down. And if I'm gonna give this to somebody, I will put some sticky strip um, or some kind of tape that you can peel up the paper off of there so that they can use it and shut it. And then when this glue dries, I'll also go in, I keep this handy, a one inch, and I will punch it through. But I don't wanna punch that with wet glue and jack up my punch. So, all right, let's get to the card. So we've got our layering piece. Now, so I've said I'm using the Halloween papers, but I don't necessarily want to make a Halloween card. So we're going to use Gorgeous Posies because I love this flower. It's easy to cut out and I just like it, the simplicity of it. And then with the bigger words, I really, I couldn't find any current large enough font words. So I'm still going to use Seriously the Best because I like this. All right, this time we're gonna do Cajun to match our envelope. I'm still gonna use these iridescent pearls because I love them. I have cut, um, this is the largest stitched shape from the ovals, stitched shapes dies. Yeah, so there's ovals, circles, and squares. And then a matching scallop. All right, this piece is for the inside. This will be our layering piece and our card base. So this is eight and a half by seven, and then I scored it at three and a half. So let me fold that. All right, I'll put that to the side. I can go ahead and tape this on first. Now, so I could go either way. I could go this way. Oh, and that looks the same exact size. I must have cut this piece wrong. Hmm. I'm just going to trim this down a little bit more. So I had started, this was three and a quarter by eight and a quarter. Um, so I'm going to have to go three and an eighth by eight and one eighth. I guess my sample card was a little different. All right, back to this. So I can have it that way which would be pretty enough, but I'm gonna stamp the flowers Cajun on Cajun, and that would be too much Cajun. So we're gonna go with my original plan and have it this way. All right, so tape. It's frustrating that these comments don't roll up on their own. Every week it's something different. And I gotta tell you, I've still been noticing when I watch everyone's videos, um, you know, Facebook will just quit playing and it'll just get a black screen and you have to go back out and come back in. Um, it'll say like, sorry, this video can't be processed or something or other. There's a problem. There's a problem, all right. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and tie my ribbon on. So I'm using the glittered, black glittered organdy ribbon. I love this stuff. And again, this is not just for Halloween. Just measure about that. And I'm just tying this in a knot. And then I will move this if I need to. All right, and I will trim that later too. I'm gonna wait until I've got my flowers for placement. All right, so we've got our pieces. So I want to stamp the inside piece. We're gonna use, like I said, Cajun Craze and the flower from Gorgeous Posies. Mmm, nice. And I'm gonna do one up here. Put that aside. 
and then I'm going to stamp three down the line. And I think that'll be it. No, I'm going to use this for some sponging, but I'll shut that for now. All right, now my black centers for the flowers. I'm going to use this Catherine Pooler. Um, I like it. It's a nice dark black ink. And that's that. Three, and then I'm going to add them here. All right. And this I actually do need to clean. I do like to clean this right away. Still need to do a little bit more rearranging on my desk. <clears throat> so I have room for everything. All right. And then I'm going to stamp the greeting on our oval. And like I said, I just didn't have a big enough um, font greeting with anything current. So, had to go back to Old Faithful. Seriously, the best. I need to pull this a little bit towards me. All right, I'm gonna hold this for a second. Yeah, Sue, it totally is. Because then you have to remember, like, go over there and swipe it up with your hand. And it's been like that for a few weeks. I don't know. I think I'm gonna have to start sending in um, feedback to, cause they do have an option for that. It's just a matter of finding it. But I, I think I'm gonna start telling them that I don't like stuff. Maybe they don't realize how annoying it is. I don't know. All right, now while this, I don't wanna touch the edges. I'm gonna take a sponge dauber and I just wanna get around the edges a little bit. And you can tell I've used this a, a lot. But I keep them until they really fall apart. All right. Uh, good. I'm happy with that. Okay. Oh, see, I can tell it's starting to fall apart because it's leaving crumbs. All right, let's tape this. And tape it on there. And now you get to watch me cut flowers. Like I said, um, this one, I like the Gorgeous Posies because it's, it's simple enough that I can cut it fairly quickly and I'm not gonna rush though but it's just easy enough <clears throat> plus this is a good size flower I've used it for a lot of things It can be a bright summer flower. It can be a fall colored flower. It's a good overall set. Phew, one down, okay. Oh yeah, the screen being smaller when you have the comments up. Yeah, that's, you're right. I hadn't even noticed that. Um, and that, so, yeah, because you're using an iPad too, right, Sue? So, sometimes I never know if it's me because of the iPad or if that's the way it is for everyone. Um, actually, though, hmm... So I was going to say, I used Dave's laptop on Saturday, but I wasn't doing a video like this, so I really can't tell. But yeah, just, they drive me nuts though, because, you know, 
Facebook makes changes, it seems like every week. And that's fine. I mean, I'm not, you know, like, oh, I hate change. It's not that. It's just, I wish stuff would work. Like, I don't like when it doesn't work the way I'm used to. And then I have to figure it out on the fly. You love my batty nails. Yeah, I'm fixing to take these off because they're, um, my fingernails keep growing. Um, they're growing longer. And, uh, I think I'm going to put the cats on next because I got those purple, the purple cats, which I think I'm going to like better because A, they're purple. Um, these have a purple, you know, they look purple when you change them in the light or turn them. But the bats are like gorgeous grape and they're glittery which I feel like they last longer for me, the glittery ones. The shimmer ones are cool, um, but I like the glitters better. And that's that. And then I think I got the black and white set that, I don't know, what is it? Like ghosty stuff or something? Those should be here in time for Halloween. I mean here, as in all my fingers, they're already here. All right, one more almost done. There we go. Okay, so let's start with, let's get rid of this. Let's put this on the inside. Hmm, that silver bit was from the ribbon. So that's going to go about there. Okay. And this was also um, eight and a quarter by three and a quarter. Because remember my card, it's eight and a half by three and a half. I have another slurp. Okay. And I just glued, I glued my centerpiece down. Let's start with that. And then I moved the ribbon around and popped up the flowers and then added some iridescent pearls. All right, so this is just eyeballing. Mm, I'm happy with that. I'm just going to hold it there for a minute. Okay, and then I'm going to scooch this over just a little before I trim it. Okay. All right, because I don't want it just hanging completely over. Okay, I feel like I got glue on me. All right, now let's do dimensionals. And I'm just gonna do two on each. These dimensionals feel weird for some reason. Actually, before I put these on, I'm going to go ahead and glue this to the card front. So see, so far nothing is screaming Halloween necessarily about this card other than the color. But when they open the envelope, that's when they'll get a little surprise. Especially the one for the sample card, how it's got bats in it. Like that's the only indication that there's any Halloween about this. And this one, it'll be just those little flowers. And they may not even notice the spider webs. Who knows? All right, that's good. So let's put one here. And these, um, I'm just like eyeballing willy-nilly. I don't want this to go 
I want it to hang over a little bit like that. All right. Mmm. I like it. Hey, Jamie Gibbs. All right. And then we're going to take some iridescent pearls. And I didn't necessarily put them... Let me bring this back in. I didn't necessarily put them in the centers. I just kind of went like off to the side some. Seems like I've landed right on top of a dimensional. And then I put some extras in. So I just realized um, that I is not dotted. So I want one right there. And then it's always better in odd numbers. So I want that right there. Like here I thought is kind of eh. Let's do that one there. That's fine. That still looks just as good. Sometimes if I get them too close together, they just don't look right. So, so that's our first card with the designer series paper. And again, that was in the magic, magic in this night paper and 12 by 12. So I made a card and an envelope out of one sheet of the 12 by 12. And actually I can, should be able to go back in, punch this now. So I go like halfway. There we go. So that is number one. So I'm doing two things. I'm doing another um, designer series paper thing and then I've got a paper pumpkin um, project and then I will be finished my Halloween treats. All right, let me clean this real quick. Throw this on the floor. Get my ruler out of the way. Yeah, I just cleaned another shelf um, underneath where I've got my paper in like a hanging file folder system and then there's a shelf under it. So of course the other day I pulled something out and a whole bunch of other stuff came out with it. Um, so then I was cleaning and I found two more of these stamp cleaners. So I have like five of them and I can't really, can't really remember why I thought I needed five, but that's that. All right, project number two with designer series paper. So this one is using the playful, um, which one is it? It's a six by six pack, playing with patterns. So it's got like stripes, polka dots, different kind of like swipey colors. All right, put this away. Where's my sample? Oh. Okay, here we go. So this is a cute little, hilarious, that I have five of them for sure. Hi, Betty. Um, so this is a, the idea is this is a gift card holder. And you can doll the front of this up, you know, however much you want. Um, but I would... This is a used up card, but I would just tape this on here with some glue dots and then it will slide down in here. Boop, and then you could like, you know, write something on this part that they see, or we could put another happy birthday. Um, so I thought this was a cute way and you could totally make an envelope. So this is gonna be, um, the finish size is three by six. So let's get to that. I'm going to use Texture Essentials. Um, I'm using these sheets that, these are foam adhesive sheets. Now before I had said, oh, I think they're too expensive, it's not a good deal, because I thought there was only four sheets in a pack, and it's $8, so I thought, that's $2 a sheet. And this sheet is, let's see, four and a quarter by four and a half. So I thought, $2 a sheet was too expensive. Well, I was wrong. It's There's six of them in here. So that's like marginally better, but I still wouldn't use these like 
in lieu of dimensionals. I'm only going to use these because I'm cutting out the letters. Um, and that's, I think that's what they intend to, to do. I mean, obviously you can do whatever you want, but so I'm using textured essentials. Well said. So I have already mounted happy birthday because I want them like left justified. And that's just how I decided for this project. And then I'm using the new playful alphabet dies that I got. So I'm doing H, B, two, the number two, two, U. All right, and I need to set this off where it will not drop. So let's start with the letters, all right? So can you see that they are popped up? I don't know if you can um, see down the side of that. But, so you measure, I set these up and to figure out exactly, you know, how big of a piece I needed. And this ended up being like one and three quarters by one and a half. It all depends on what you're um, cutting. So you peel one side and stick our paper down. All right. And then I'm going to bring my little cutter machine in here. Then we just set these, our letters on top, and I just have to be sure that I'm not moving it. Um, and it should cut through both. I'm actually gonna run it back through again, like twice. And I don't wanna get it like so close to the edge. All right, that's gonna do it. Now you would think, oh, that's puffy. It's not gonna go through. It's foam, so it's gonna squish down. It is a little firm going through here. But do not fear. What is that? Ugh. All right, so now these, let me uh, get the dies off. Now this, um, you'll see little can you see the little dots that are showing up? Those are from the holes that you have to push the stuff through and that's just because there's so much pressure, it's pushing it up in all the, the die places, anywhere it can go. Um, so I don't really know how to smooth that out, especially since I've got the foam on it. But, so as we see, it cut through the foam and everything and then when I'm ready, whoops, I'll just peel this off. So that's kind of cool. I imagine if you had um, some of the foam tape, like I've got um, a pretty wide roll. I imagine I could do the same thing with that. Um, man, these little bits don't want to come out. Get the inside of that B gone. All right. And then our U. And number two. So I like that um, these are small enough, you know, you can really spell out anything. Now, you may think, hey, you could use that for something. You're right. I'm not. I'm over it. I'm not going to keep a whole bunch of scraps and stuff that can go and fill up my garbage. All right, so put these away so I don't lose them. Even though I've got them on the magnet sheet, um, that's not like sticky, so. Okay. Oh, now here was the leftover from that strip that I cut off of. So this piece I picked, um, I'm gonna fold it in half and then bend it down. So you can do a scoring, you can get your scoring plate out and measure it at three, but I'm just going to eyeball it. All right, and then, actually,
actually I'm gonna go I'm not gonna go all the way to the edge with this corner so this one I really went close to the edge with the fold um, I don't see the need to do that and I did use glue so I'm going to get it just as close as I can and not a ton. Like I don't want it to squeeze out, but right up as close to the edge as I can get. Okay. And then I'll hold this for a minute. So yeah, this good. You can make an envelope and give this to someone. Use your bone folder. Uh-huh. See, this is why I wish I could see the comments rolling. Um, and then I would know what you were laughing about, Jamie. Ugh. Oh, are you laughing about the scraps? And I was like, I'll just throw it out. Because that would make sense. All right. Did I get any glue? A little bit. All right. And then I do want to tack this down a little bit. If I had a button or something fun um, to put like right there, that would be cool too. But I've cut these other pieces and it's going to like pretty much cover it. So I'm not going to worry about it. Okay. So this piece, two inches wide and I believe it's five and three quarters inch long. Yep, five and three quarters. So I want to use my new fancy, well, new this year, fancy tag topper punch. Any punch you have. Oh, come on. How is that? Ah, oh, okay. It would help if I punched it all the way through. Right. All right, this garbage. Like I said, my intention is to glue a gift card and just with like one or two glue dots right here. So I don't want to do a whole bunch of, you know, dolling up on this, but I do want to give it a little, um, little design, something to fill it up so it's not plain. Now with the stripes, I wanted to go with this plaid. This is from Texture Essentials that I just got. Um, and I haven't played with it too much, but I'm going to go with this weavy looking business. So I'm using Coastal Cabana ink on Coastal Cabana paper, tone on tone. That is one of my faves. All right. And I'm actually going to stamp off. So it's really subtle. Okay. Only top and bottom because gift card will be here. And actually, I don't need to clean this immediately. Um, but I do want to stamp. So then I've got my layering pieces. These are from the Stitch So Sweetly dies, the rectangle scallopies. So plain, although I'm going to hit this with the same textured weave. And this time I'm not going to stamp off. All right, so that's gonna have some. And then the white that our letters will go on, that I wanted to stamp off. Nice, because then it's just not so plain. All right, I think this is it for the Coastal. Put that back. And then the other color we're using is Misty Moonlight. Um, so I don't know if you can see, but the Happy Birthday I stamped it like all over to make a pattern and some are upside down and I did that on purpose and this is tone on tone so I started up in the corner and just trying to space it out then I flipped it and the Y and the Y should kind of line up like right there. So it'll fill in. And obviously it's not perfectly straight. It's not the end of the world. Okay. So I like that for a background. 
You can use any words, really. <laughs> Jamie. <laughs> you know how I am. That's it, right. It's dead to me. <laughs> All right, clean that off a little. All right, now let's do some assembly. Um, I want to tie my ribbon on first, just because I've got the ribbon going around the whole thing, and then I tied a bow on the end, and I wanted to do that before I put any of the rest of this on. And I did a double, double length. So actually, let's do, hmm, let's do this for the tag. And then I'm going to fold it again and I'm putting it through the front and then all these tails go through this loop and I pull it down and that was like too much ribbon but I would rather use a little bit more than you need and trim it off. All right, and then we trim the bangs. And this side. All right, I like all of that. Fluffy, fluffy. All right, and again, then we will... <gasps> oh my God, I used all my pole party ribbon. Sacre bleu. Oh my God. This is the second... So I have never ordered a roll of ribbon and actually used the entire thing. But look, I did that. I'm almost done with the metallic, the magic mesh or metallic mesh ribbon. And I cannot believe I used this on the pool party. Like that, I'm very happy. Because usually I get stuff and then I only use a little bit of it and I have all these partial rolls. So, all right, I'm not going to cry about it, but we're going to have to go to plan B and bear with me while I find another suitable replacement. Hmm. Just jade. Oh. So let's see, we've got Coastal Cabana. I know I don't have any Coastal Cabana ribbon. Misty Moonlight, I don't have that. Purple Posy. Hmm, you know what? Let's color some with some blends real quick. So, all right, so this I've got Classic Weave, and I'm not gonna double this because this, I only doubled that because it was sheer. All right, so let me measure this. do it and let me grab the coastal cabana marker dark this was the first one I grabbed so let's see Ugh, that is like too dark hmm because coastal cabana is one of the original blends so oh I might have medium, okay. Medium works, all right. So these um, these were from when Stampin' Up! first came out with the blends and they were like, uh, something was wrong and they didn't stay juicy very long. All right, so. This really sucks a lot of your ink out when you're coloring the ribbon, um, but sometimes you need it to match, make something match. So if you had a, you know, a roll of any white ribbon, as long as you have a blends marker, hmm, all right, and I'm having to do it both sides. So if this was sheer, it would have bled right through to the other side. I wouldn't have to like double down. All right, but this is gonna work. And coloring your ribbon with the blends is better than just your regular markers, because your regular markers are water-based and anytime you're handling it, you know, tying it, 
sticking it on any moisture is going to make the color bleed and come off on your hands with regular markers or with reinker because you can like put some reinker in a bowl and a little bit of water and color your ribbon but it's not permanent so it will bleed out on you on your project if there's any little wetness but using these blends or any alcohol marker really sharpies that works copics that works this it won't come off on my um, hands later all right let's get those caps on now you may think oh that looks um darker and ugly uh it will lighten up this is just because it's fresh all right but it's good enough for to get going with this Okay, so I'm going to tie it in a knot first, and then my bow. Yeah, I was looking for my, I have the white, mm, it's like silky, and then it's got a silver um, edge to it, because that would have been nice too, but I could not find it quickly enough in my ribbon bin, so... We ended up with this. Okay. All right, let me flip this around and mess with this a little bit. Just, you know, getting it, getting the edges nice. Okay. I'm happy with that. Crisis averted. Mm, and it smells like Sharpies. I have another little bit of coffee. All right, now I attached all these with um, dimensionals. And I just started with, I started from the bottom up. So I wanted this one like at a little jaunty angle. And I do want it, it hangs over the edge a little bit on this one. Um, but I don't want it to do that here because my idea is that, you know, you can make an envelope. I mean, you could just make your envelope bigger. Who am I kidding? But I'm going to just try to keep it contained. And six should do it. All right. Jaunty angle. All right. And then this one is glued because it is, I don't want it to be super, super high. All right, and I want it just a little different. All right, and then this is glued. And then we've got the height from the letters because they are already popped up. All right, let me just hold this here for a minute. Plus, it takes forever to dry. Yes, Sue, when you're coloring ribbon with, like, re-inkers and stuff. But, you know, years ago, that's all we had. So that's what we did. Times are a-changing. All right, now, for the letters. So I already know that these are going to fit. So normally I would, you know, place them exactly where I want them just to get everything, you know, make sure it's going to fit. Um, but I already know that because I've already made one. Let me just peel these off. It, this really is pretty cool with the foam. And it beats having to use like a fine tip glue pen. Um, Although these aren't so thin that that's difficult, but it's just cool that these are popped up. Okay. So let's finish with some regular rhinestones. And let me just put one glue dot on here just so you see for sure what I mean, that it'll fit. All right, one. Like I said, I would put it right there. 
and that goes right in. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I like it, but the two different kinds of ribbon. Mm. Not quite sure how I feel about that. All right, let's put one here, big one, and then I did a small one and a small one down here. So, easy enough, um, and with a six by six piece of paper as the base. Oh, but what I meant to say at the beginning, like you could make this and put it in like um, a scrapbook or a journal you know, like tuck spots, like if there's pockets, you know, you could put this in another pocket or it could just be laying, you know, tucked in your journal. So another idea, and then you would pull this out and you could just write stuff on it or it could have little pictures attached on it or you could have like a pile of pictures, you know, you could probably fit like a little um, drink mix stuff in here too, like the singles. So I think you could use it for a lot of things. Um, not just a gift card, but I like it. All right, next. So I am just about finished with my Halloween treats. And this is how I did them. So this is, the last one is not designer series paper. It's um, a paper pumpkin idea. Um, a girl, I saw it, her name's Kimberly Smith use the paper pumpkin kit to make this box because as a cracker like they're not um they're not very big let me see and this holds a lot of candy i tell you so dave wanted to make some for like the kids that can't have nuts so i had to go back and that we had to buy like gummy bears and starburst all this you know terrible stuff but it was really hard packing. The packaging is crazy. Like a package this big for five gummy bears. That don't make sense. Completely stupid. All right, so let's do the base of, here's our pieces that we need. Let me get this stuff out of the way. So like I said, this um, her name's Kim Smith, came up with this. This is the original um, cracker box from the paper pumpkins and they were um, double-sided so there's pumpkin on one side and that's how we did our treats so the pumpkin ones are the no nuts the cage inside is the good stuff Reese's peanut butter Hershey's Kit Kats man if you read the packaging so much stuff it seems like anything chocolate it'll have that um, disclaimer on it that this was made in a factory with nuts so then you can't give it out I learned that from a girl at work okay so instead of folding it up and you know that's only like an inch wide that's not gonna hold much we're gonna fold it this way and this way Okay, <coughs> and then I don't know if you can tell, but there's a piece of plastic here. So window sheet, this is two and three eighths by five. And I am gonna need sticky strip. Cause this is cool, then you can see the candy. All right, so I'm putting this all the way across on that side and all the way across on this side. All right, I'm gonna peel this up. Oh my goodness. It worked the first time and so easy. Hey Gail, yeah, totally cute. All right, so this, um, the window sheet, I want it to be just above the score line. Keep it kind of straight. So can you see I've got it just above there? All right, and then we will peel this side off. Maybe. See, the other one came off too nice. There we go. 
All right, and to get this where I want it to go, I'm folding just this flap down and then this fold it right there. All right, so then we've got our box, like our slide. Now, to make the box that all our candy is gonna go in, and this, this is pretty hefty. So this piece, seven and three eighths by four and seven eighths. Seven and three eighths by four and seven eighths. And actually, let me just write that down. So we'll do paper, pumpkin, box, seven, three eighths by four and seven eighths. That's a lot of sevens in there. And we're gonna score all sides at one and a quarter. And then our window sheet, hopefully you can read this and you can screenshot it or make notes or whatever. Two and three eighths by five. All right, so that's all we should need. I'll leave that up there for a minute. So in case you're, what is the white gadget used to press down on your cards? That is a bone folder. That is, um, yeah, it's plastic. Um, I've had it for years, but yep, it comes in handy. I love it for, you know, folding the cards and making all your crease marks, like you said. Good question, Vicki. All right, so now I'm gonna score at one and a quarter on all the sides. One and a quarter. Now this box, I didn't spend a ton of time um, like making it, it's easy enough, but so I'm gonna cut straight. I'm on the left side of the score mark here and then angle it in. And then I angled that side also. I don't always do that, um, but I thought I would try it and it worked out pretty well. So this is on the right side of the score mark and then angle it. And then this side is the left side of the score mark and angle it and then trim that off. All this goes in the garbage. And again, I will use my bone folder. It just makes a nice, I'm pressing it down pretty hard, Vicki. It's, it just makes a nice crisp fold. And when you're making boxes, especially, that is pretty important. All right, so our box is gonna go together like this. So I want tapes on that side. And here's where I just did like a little piece at an angle. Boop, boop, two more. Yeah, I'm getting down to the end of this. Awesome. I have another whole roll. I really love this stuff. Um, but sometimes it gives me fits. So I'm, when it's gone, I'm gonna have to get something else. All right, we're almost ready. Ah, all right. It's actually made of bone. No, Sue, they're made out of plastic, I thought. That's, nobody would want this if it was really made out of bone. I thought that was a long time ago, maybe. I thought it's like acrylic or something. All right, so then folding up and I want this side to be flush with that, like, so it's a nice corner. You see that? Like I said, I can't tell from my little screen how close I need to get, but to see we've got a nice, nice corner. And I hope this has been in focus today. It's 
hard for me to keep track. All right, so we've got our box, and so we've made a slider. See? Easy peasy. So I put in some two Kit Kats minis, two Hershey bars, and then peanut butter pumpkins. I'm gonna squish that in. I had bats too, and then I ran out because they only give you like a couple. But how cute is that? All right, and then I will decorate. So I made, Jamie, I made all 20 of my um, crackers like this for the people to give out or for the kids. All right, I've got a little bit. Now I had two spools. Um, they really give you a lot of doodads with the paper pumpkin. I had two spools, black and white um, Baker's twine that I'm using right now, and I used most of it up. So I tied this and then I'll tie it in a knot. And I kept the decorating a little on the simple side. I just glued some stuff down. So this is what I had. Oh, and I had cats. So I used all the cats on the chocolate ones. And then flowers. Two Cajun. These were um, flowers that were already colored and popped out. I've got some pumpkins to work with. Um, but yeah, this is all I was doing. There was more leaves. So I'm just going to take these extras and maybe make some other cards with them. Um, oh. And I actually used the stamp set from Banner Year to stamp this because I already, um, I have a lot of Halloween stuff, so I already sold off my paper pumpkin stamp set and the, um, the ink spot that it comes with because I don't always keep them. If they're really pretty or if it's something that I don't have anything similar, I will keep it, but mostly I just sell them off. All right, and then I'm, I'm gonna put these Flowers. I thought I had another flower. Here it is. Okay. So pretty simple. Um, but cute. I only had so many of these little things. These little rectangles. So the witch's hat got those. And that's that. So that is... Yeah, gal. And you could put other stuff in them. Um, or, you know, you could even keep them around just as, like, you could make a little mini loaf of bread or something. I don't know. You could fit other stuff in there. All right. So, yeah. Again, that was, um, Kimberly Smith had that idea. Very cool. So, let's look at our other things. So, we had our 6 by 6 gift card holders or drink holders or whatever we want to put in it. And then we had slimline cards made out of a 12 by 12 sheet with their envelopes. Like I said, so this designer series paper is on sale all month. And that is, we are halfway through the month. So that's it for today. Um, next week, I'm just gonna give you a little sneak peek. I am going to be making earrings. I have cut out the dies of this black glitter paper and um, I actually cut it out. I cut two out for each pair because I cut it front ways and back ways. I'm going to glue these together so it's glittery on both sides and then punch the hole and then do the jewelry pieces. You know, I got some beads and I've got earring things. So we're going to make bat earrings. And then I'm also going to make some, I got some folly beads. I'm going to make a pair with these acorns. So that is going to be cute, cute, cute. So that will be next week. Looking forward to that. All right. So that's it, ladies. Thanks for being here. Um, if you like it or love it, give me a thumbs up or a heart. And I will see you next week.